What's up guys, it's Alec from Cichlid Bros. In today's video, we have a massive update on my basement fish room where I added a ton of new fish to my two big cichlid tanks and I even set up my 40 breeder with a new mystery inhabitant, so we'll see what that is. So, we got a lot to update you on, so let's dive right in. About six weeks ago, Troy and I set up my new 180 gallon custom aquarium, which I'm calling the ultimate Umbuna cichlid tank. I love the 3D background and rocks from aqua decor, and seeing the small Umbuna thrive in this large tank have been incredible. When this tank was set up, I was able to start working on the next round of updates, which was new fish, starting with my first unboxing from Tampa Bay Cichlids. First one is a Demasonii, and they always label them for you if it's male or female. So this one is female from the males they put it in. So we're gonna go ahead and let these guys float as I open them up. Male Masobo Deep Magunga. They have just the best selection of Masobo Deep Magungas, actually larger than they advertise. You buy these setups at 1.25 to two inches, and the Magungas at least have always been actually a little bit more like three inches. So this one's already got a little bit of blue in it. Very easy to tell. Got 24 fish in this box. So it's gonna be a packed house floating these guys. All right, another Demasoni female here. Very nice specimens of Demasoni so far as well. One other aspect of why I chose Demasoni and Masobo Deep Magungas is I know that I can get really good young specimens from Tampa Bay Cichlids. They always have a large quantity of those two types of fish available. Here is a female Masobo Magunga. So all fish are unboxed. So now at this time, we're gonna let these guys sit for about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna come back and unbag them. After these guys went through quarantine and were eating aggressively, I added them to the 180. I then ordered more big Umbuna from Ron Cichlids. I've ordered from Ron Cichlids before, but it's usually full grown predator haps. Um, they do a great job with packaging, but this is my first time doing Umbuna from them. So let's see what we got. First of all, we have very big, good looking specimens. This is an Elongatus Chelosi, which I had in my very first Umbuna tank, if you remember from like five years ago. Yeah, this thing looks amazing, and I love the big packaging that it comes in. The packaging also comes with a lot of good insulation. So let's get them floating. This one's a very rare Umbuna. This is a Deep Ndonga. This should be, yeah, this is about a three inch specimen, so not quite full grown, but grown enough to have a good amount of color, and he's already swimming around. He looks good. Really excited about this one. This is a gold Kawanga. This one is, like it sounds, really golden and it has black vertical bars. So I really hope this one really colors up because when they do, it's just amazing. Gold Kawanga. Oh boy. All right, I better pause this and take some water out. All right, so I got enough water taken out that these things can float without overflowing the tank. This last Umbuna is a very rare one called the Gold Bar, which, like it sounds, it's got some gold and some blue and some black, and it's just got the nice cool vertical bars, and it's I like how rare it is. So like I said, I like to go with some uh, oddballs on this shipment. So all of these specimens look really big, and I cannot wait to see them in about 30 minutes after we get done floating. After they went through quarantine, I added them right into the 180, which is looking awesome with the new fish and water clarity. I'll give a quick update on the rest of the fish before revealing the new hap in my 220, and then the big surprise of my 40 gallon tank. All right, so first off, let's take a look at the 180 gallon Mbuna tank. As you can see, it's getting pretty full finally with its new inhabitants. So let's go ahead and break down what we have in this tank. As you can see, there's a lot of yellow and a lot of blue in here. All of the yellow are female or subdominant male Masobo Deep Magungas. They are dimorphic where the females and subdominants are yellowish orange 
and the dominant males turn a black and blue splotchy color which is really awesome i wanted them to kind of be the focal point of my tank great mix of blue black and yellow i wanted to go with those guys my Second most dominant species in here is the Demasoni. Maybe my favorite Mbuna. They are really cool looking. I really love the light blue and the dark blue and some of the black that they have. And they're a great dwarf Mbuna that I can really add a lot of. They do great in really large numbers. In small numbers, they can be overly aggressive, especially towards each other. So I thought a 180 gallon tank with a ton of Mbuna and a ton of Demasoni would be a perfect setup for them. The second subgroup we have in here is the Pseudotrophius Mangano, which looks just like the Johani, except for the Mangano are not dimorphic. They're all light blue, dark blue, and black. We have six of these in here. This is the dominant male. He's really cool. He's mostly black. The dominant males get mostly black, where the rest of them are more like these guys, which are just light blue and dark blue. And they're horizontal bars, so it's just something a little bit different. As you can see, the Mbuna are super personable, mainly just because they're always hungry, but they are a very busy tank and make for a lot of entertainment as you come up and look at the tank. So moving on to our next group of species is if you can see this little guy down here, it's one of my JLo reefs. The JLo reefs are the smallest group I have in here and they're the little non-colored ones. JLo reefs are really cool white with yellow fins and black bars once they color up as dominant males. But as of right now, they're pretty small so we're gonna have to be patient with them. That's okay, that'll be fun to watch them grow up. We have about 25 Misobo Deep Magungas in here and about 25 or maybe more like 20 Demasoni. Other than that, we have a few small groups of species, starting with this guy right here, which is the Elongatus Chewir. This is the dominant male here. One of the worst things about Mbuna is they are difficult to get a focus on because they move around so much. So we have two dominant males with about four females of the elongated, elongatus chewiers. So the first thing I did when I started getting all these Mbuna was I got about 18 Masobo Deep Magungas and I started quarantining them in my 40 breeder and growing them out just a little bit. And after about a month of that, I added the other groups, the chewiers, the JLo Reefs and the Mangano and quarantined them along with some added Magungas. And then once the 180 gallon came, finally, I put all those guys that I've been quarantining for months into the 180 and I bought about 24 Demasoni and I quarantined them for about a month in my 40 breeder. And so like I told you before, if you remember following along, I have been kind of quarantining these guys in waves. So I'd put a group in, I'd quarantine a new group, I'd put another group in, I'd quarantine another new group. So I actually just now put in my most recent group that I've been quarantining, so let's get into those guys. Here is one of my most recent. Quarantined these guys for about two weeks. And I got these from Ron Cichlids. Here's another one right here. And as you can see, these guys are a little bit more mature, a little bit bigger, a little bit more co colored up. And with these guys, I wanted to just kind of go oddball species. And here's another good look at another one here. This is the Deep Ndongo. That's the Elongatus Chelosi. Chelosi. And here is the Gold Coanga. And I also have a gold bar cichlid in here somewhere. Even though it looks like there's a lot of Mbuna in here, there's a lot more hiding in the rock work. So that's where my other new guy is. So I got four solo species that were not in groups, which I wanted to do mainly groups in here, but I also wanted to do some really cool individuals. The main reason why I don't do a lot of individuals is because I think they color up a little bit better when there's other species, especially females of their own species. The Chelosi is the biggest and the most colored up. 
And he also is the culprit for this rock getting knocked off of my nice little pile of rocks here. So he loves to dig. He made a total mess of my 40 breeder. There he is, always lurking in the shadows. Right now, these guys are about half grown. They'll probably get another inch or two of size and really fill this tank out. I probably have enough space to add, you know, maybe 10 more. So I could go some more individuals, maybe another group, or just add to the current groups that I have. So let me know in the comments what you think I should do. And right next door to the 180, we can't forget about the big boy tank, the 220 gallon Predator Hap tank. And these guys are massive. So in this video, I wanted to just go ahead and focus on some of the newer guys. Starting here with my Lepturus green. This is Bucochromus, one, one of my favorite uh, groups of species. There's the Buco Noto right there. He's also awesome in the same family. And then right here is one of my newer fish. He's a six, seven inch. I got him as a six incher, probably up to seven inches now. That's how fast he grows. But this is a Lepturus green. Even though it's Lepturus green, he's still gonna be mostly blue and yellow. And then I got this guy right here, a Buco, Bucochromis rhodesii yellow. It's pr still pretty small, but one of my favorite fish. And I got him at about four and a half inches, but he holds his own in here really good. And he'll grow pretty fast. He'll be one of the big boys here pretty soon. And I just love him. When these guys are full grown, they're almost like great white sharks. They just kind of lurk around. I love it. Hello. One of the best looking fish I have in here right now is the Dominiochromis strigatus. He's also one of my newer fish in here. Just look at this guy. Amazing. Some turquoise blue and the red fins are coming in with the awesome eye biter shape being in the same family as the eye biter. I just love him. And the newest fish I have in here, I was really excited to get him. He's one of the most rare predator haps to find out there online. And this is the Champs, Champs of Chromis. Spilorhynchus, the cousin to the Malawi trout, which is the Champsochromus corallius. Watch out, Fusco. Fusco has been taking a beating. He loves to fight. This is gonna be a big showstopper, the, the excuse me, the Spilorhynchus right here. And he's really just now started to swim out in the open. He was lurking in the shadows for a long time, I think kind of scared of the big boys. And so now he's finally okay to hold his own. One note about this tank, if you're a little OCD about your fish tanks like I am, you're probably driven nuts by the huge pile of sand over here and the huge, looks like an ice pond right here where there's no sand. I hate it. I always fix it, but these guys love to dig and make mounds and this is just where they love to make mounds at. So unfortunately, they like it with a bare bottom on the side over here and they fight me on it all the time. There's the uh, Kiwingi. I love this guy too. He kind of reminds me of a whale with the eyeball on the side of his head. Right now in this tank, the dominant fish currently, it's kind of been switching back and forth, but it is the Nimbacronus Minustus right now. And you can tell he is just amazing, massive. They kind of have a bad reputation for being kind of a nasty, mean tank boss, but he's actually been not bad. He chases some, some people around, but Nowhere near as bad as it was whenever my eye biter was my tank boss. So some people's favorite is the Phosphorchromus Stratus right here. He was actually super black and dark, which is like his main show colors. Um, actually, when I first came down to the basement to film today, unfortunately, before I got the camera, he kind of colored down a little bit, but I still love him. He's so big, so metallic. He just looks great. Can't forget to give an update on my favorite fish, the Malawi hawk. This guy is a full foot in length, and there's his brother right there, another Malawi hawk. These guys are still recovering from some internal parasites. That's why you got some of the black blotching. From my research, it says, you know, it'll go away on its own, but I did treat it for parasites just in case that helps. And you can kind of see the colors coming back, so I cannot wait for these splotches to go away. The majority of these fish are over 11 inches or maybe over a foot. So everybody's doing great. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's eating. And this tank is still the showstopper it was on day one. So let's move on to the 40 breeder. 
All right, so what's to do with my 40 breeder? As you can see, it looks pretty different. I really love this scape. I pushed all the rocks over to the side and the corner, but if you look closely, you also notice the water level's a little bit lower. And on top of the rock pile is a turtle basking rock. And my kids love turtles. They watch Ninja Turtles every day and they've been begging me to get a turtle and I couldn't resist any longer. I love turtles too. I like turtles. So that's what I went with. I got a Southern painted turtle which the males, which is what I got, only grow to about four inches and they can live long-term in a 40 breeder. So I got him, he's way back here. I'll show you, I'll zoom in here in a second, but he's only about the size of a quarter right now. He just hatched, so he's really tiny and he'll be kind of a slow grower and turtles do pretty well with Mbuna or African cichlids anyway. So I can still use this as a grow out and quarantine system for any new fish I have. So I get to kind of get the best of both worlds. It's a nicely scaped turtle tank, as well as continuing to be a quarantine grow out tank for all my other Mbuna. I'll keep this thing going for the cichlids long-term, as well as the turtle. And one thing I really wanted to do with the turtle tank is I wanted to have a nice scape with it. You don't see a lot of really nice aquascapes with the turtle tank, mainly because they mess up a lot of it. They move the rocks around, they move the sand around and everything. And they gotta have that basking area. So I know it's kind of hard to do, but I wanted to really try to do it. And I really love the scape I have. I got the different color lights with the typical current USA white and blues on this side with the heat lamp slash UVA, UVB for basking over here. And I think it looks just really cool. And I can't wait to see this turtle grow and we'll continue to show the progress of the turtle on the channel, so stay tuned. An update on the shrimp tank here. Once again, the shrimp are always hiding. Probably have about eight shrimp in here, last I checked. Not a lot of action going on. And the future of this tank is up in the air a little bit. Let me know what you think. If you would like to see more shrimp in here, I might re-up and get bigger colony and try to keep it going a little bit more and get some more babies out of it. Or if you would like to see something else, I really like the rimless, nice nano tank system I have. Just don't know if I wanna keep the shrimp or do something different. So let me know in the comments. Also, you can see my couch is gone. We're getting a new couch coming up. It's gonna go all the way to the wall in the corner there. So we're gonna go ahead and move this tank over next to the Mbuna tank over here on this stand right here. So we used this stand for my 20 gallon before. It fits real good for the 10 gallon. So that's where it'll be going. And it might be shrimp, it might not. All right guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed all the updates on all my tanks down here. I gotta get to work, feed these guys, and doing some water changes, but I wanted to make sure I get this money shot between my two big tanks before we leave. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.